Celebrities around the world are speaking up and trying to draw support for Ukraine. Canadian singer-songwriter Chantal Kravyatsik is one of them. She's been fundraising for Unite with Ukraine, which provides bulletproof vests and other gear to Ukraine. Last week, she was in the House of Commons to hear Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky's address. After that, she met with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, and Ms. Kravyatsik joins me now. Hi, great Hi, to meet Leslie. you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for having me. Thank you very much for coming into studio. I, I wanted to ask you, first of all, like, what is driving your desire to be helpful in this awful situation? Wow, that's a loaded question for me because for now more than two decades I have felt so much compassion for people who are caught in conflict zones and I've been able to have experiences visiting people who are displaced and seeing the programs that War Child Canada um, so thoughtfully puts together, um, helping people put their lives back together, um, helping really to stop the cycle of war. And so because it's personal for me being pretty Ukrainian through and through, other than my indigenous maternal grandmother, I'm very Ukrainian and was raised very Ukrainian. So I'm very proud. I, I always, um, growing up, you know, being, being um, Métis, I felt I had to be proud of being Métis because they were the underdog. But, and of course, the Ukrainians were the underdog at some point as well, but I didn't feel that about being Ukrainian. But it was in this moment that the invasion happened that I, I didn't realize how proud I was to be Ukrainian. I have to stop myself from crying now. It's very hard. So, um, you know, I carry a very Ukrainian name and, and, and pride with me everywhere and every show, every, every city I go to. I, I'm absolutely devastated that this is happening. Um, so for me, I guess it's, it's kind of coming from both places, knowing what war looks like, um, what these people are enduring, and that they are my people. I wonder also, like, just have, having that, had that unique experience at being able to see conflict zones up close, yeah. if the reaction is even more visceral. I, I mean, we're so. all watching it in horror, I but so. is it even, you know, more visceral for you because you, you know what they're enduring? Yeah, there was this one time that um, Dr. Samantha Nutt, who is the co-founder of War Child, she and I and a couple of other people from the, uh, a local partnership, so I believe we were somewhere in Iraqi Kurdistan, if I'm not mistaken, and we had to actually drive through a flattened neighborhood in order to get where we were going to an IDP camp. And everybody else was just chatting because they had been through a neighborhood like that before, but I had not. And I had, I had to ask them to slow the car down because it was just too fast. It was just too much at once to see this. It looks, it looks like a movie set. You just can't even believe it. And they're homes like ours. You know, they, they're real, just like, just like we are real. And it's, it feels like it's Right now, it feels like it, it is happening to us in a, in a way. And I know that you've been raising money through this organization to help out yeah. in the fight, particularly, um, you know, the Ukrainians have put up against Russia, the Russian invasion. Yes. Uh, you've also been, you were telling me in the commercial, even like trying to help families mm -hmm. leave yeah. uh, devastated cities like Mariupol. Yes. Um, last evening, it was actually my, my husband's best friend's uh, accountant. His wife is Ukrainian and her um, daughter is trying to get out of Mariupol. And of course, the initiative I'm working with called Unite with Ukraine, you can go to uniteWithUkraine.com to help. Uh, with non-lethal equipment for the defenders in the um, Territorial uh, Defense Unit. Um, you know, uh, she's trying to get her daughter out of Mariupol. And so um, I, I said, I'll do everything I can because the initiative is, is sort of, I guess, partnered with the Ukrainian World Congress. And they have an uh, inter you know, amazing network and connections for the, di the uh, um, uh, diaspora of, you know, approximately 20 million people outside of Ukraine uh, that are Ukrainian. And so their connections are phenomenal. So honestly, this is not the first time this has happened in the past three weeks where I'm going to them. And they are literally saying, okay, what road, what, what village, like, where are they? And they're, because, you know, you, you even said it before we started, you know, someone that they literally, they, they don't even, they're in Mariupol and they can't even find their own, they, don't, they can't find each other there. Activity, yeah. So it's so bad. So um, it's really just about, you know, hey, you know, I know someone who's here. Can they get here? And we're trying to get, you know, individual uh, vests to be protective, you know, bullet, bulletproof vests to people. And it's honestly a few times it's surreal. It's like my phone has turned into an episode of Homeland. It's unbelievable. And I really believe that it's affecting everyone because, you know, my husband is, you know, Italian from Etobicoke. And yet he is reaching out to me at 1.30 in the morning and saying, hey, you know, can you see if your people know someone who can help? And it's, it's, it goes further. I mean, this family is thinking they want to go into, you know, Russia is the safest place for them to go. Can you imagine that the safest place that you would go to right now is Russia? 
can you imagine into the arms of your of your murderers? Um, that's so disturbing. But for them to feel like they might have a chance to get northwest, what are the routes to get there? And then, of course, I had to say, hey, tell the family not to go to Russia because they're not getting the information that actually, if you go into Russia, you might be held for three months and or you might be sent to Siberia. This is a... Uh, you're a musician. Yeah, I'm a we're, musician. Yeah, I was going to say, we're, <laughs> a, politi we're a political right, show, right. Uh, but we're interested because uh, we saw you in the House of Commons. Mm -hmm. We know that yeah. you've met with the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. You have been vocal about uh, what you hope governments right. do. And, yes. and we're on mm -hmm. the cusp of a meeting between yes. all the world's yes. leaders. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, an emergency extraordinary, as NATO yep. calls it, mm -hmm. summit. What, what, what is your message to them? Well, first of all, I had an opportunity to, um, to see Justin before he went on the plane yesterday and and I ask the question you know it's it's interesting he's running a, a country and him and his team are running a country that's not the only thing that's going on in the world is the war right so I said to him when I saw him what's happening today and he looked at me like did I know all the other things that was happening today so I, I first of all I, I want to say that I just respect that for everybody this is not everything maybe it is to me but I, I did ask him point blank like what is gonna what is gonna happen there and it I, I mean he you can tell even the way he, Zelensky addressed him in Parliament that day. He says, dear Justin, you know, he wasn't saying dear Joe. I mean, they're, they're, they're friends. They, they, they care for each other. I mean, he cares and he's a good man. So I know he's doing, he and his team are doing absolutely everything that they can. Um, so that's, that's that piece. But I think, you know, two things. One is that it's, it's a team effort, right? It's not Justin and what his team can do. It's, it's, a, it's an overall uh, team effort of all the governments and I mean I know what I would like to see happen I would like to see personally I would like to see this this system of Putin's to be dismantled because it's Hitler-esque um, it's uh, you know they are um, breaking breaking the international tr laws now um, they are they are intentionally hitting civilian targets um, it's a genocide in my in my opinion um, and I think that they're managing to do so because they have convinced the people, they're doing it for them, that it's the right thing to do. And that is what is Hitler-esque about it. And so that's why I think, it, you know, look, it's, it's, got, it's got to go. It's got to be gone. No one wants to say it out loud, but I'm, I'm fine to say it. It's, it's got to be dismantled. That's my hope. But until that point, I think we as individuals, you know, these defenders are out um, volunteering as individuals themselves to defend their, their land, their, their freedom. And so I, I feel like we should do what we can as individuals. And I know that as individuals, we can ask our office to, to you know, donate and try to come up with enough funds for one vest. One level four vest costs approximately $900 to $1,500. You know, a, a whole supply kit of night vision goggles, a helmet, um, and medical supplies and the, and the vest costs twenty five hundred dollars. So if you can go to unite with Ukraine dot com, you know, that's that's the way I know for sure right now we can help because Red Cross they don't even have infrastructure right there right now. We need sort of a guerrilla style grassroots way of coming at things. And it's not it's not lethal equipment. It's it's just so that they can defend themselves. Okay, I have to leave it there. I'm out of time. But I'm thank sorry. you very much for your time. <laughs> that's okay. I appreciate you coming Thank you, Vashi, for having nice me. Thank you. you everyone. Chantal Kraviatsik. <laughs> Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.